Hey everyone, welcome back and let's write some more neat code today. So today let's solve the problem count servers that communicate. So this is pretty similar to another problem that we kind of just solved. We're given an M by N grid. So for example, you can see the grid that's over here. It's given in this format. So the first row is one, zero. One means that there is a server at that position. I don't know why they made the server so big, but anyways, in the next position, we had a zero, meaning that it's empty. And so the last row had one, one, meaning that there's two servers there. So what we want to do for each of these servers, we want to know, is it able to communicate with another server or not? Basically, we're looking for a yes or no answer for each given server. So this server, or like any server, for example, can communicate with servers that are either on the same like y axis like vertically aligned or horizontally like on the same uh, level so in other words in terms of the data structure that we're given we know that like this is uh, row zero this is row one this is column zero and column one so for this server to get that yes or no answer all we need to know is is there any other server in the same row okay there's not that's a no but what about the column is there any other server in the same column yes there is so for this server we can give it a yes it can communicate with another server specifically this one we'll ask that same question for every server so this server it can actually communicate with two and this server can also communicate with this one but not that one but still one is enough so all three of these servers will get a yes and thus what we will return is the number three now another way to think about it would be to ask for this server how many servers are in the same row well Right now, there's one server in this row. What about the column? Well, there's two servers in the column. So what we specifically care about is if there is at least two servers in a row or a column for a given server, well, then we can give that server a yes. Now, to quickly look at another big example, we can see that looking at each server, this one can obviously communicate with another one. Same thing here, same thing with these two. This guy, unfortunately, can't. Nothing in the row or column. So how do we go about solving this problem? The brute force would, I guess, be to first just iterate over the entire grid, every row, every position. So that's going to be the nested loops. And then even in the nested loops uh, for a given position, like now we're looking at this position, we see that there's a one there. So now we want to ask that yes or no question. Can it communicate with other servers? And to do that, what we can do is scan through the entire row and the entire column just looking for another server, except obviously this one, we would skip uh, the same server. So that in there is going to be another loop, which is gonna be proportional, I think, to the number of rows plus columns. So the overall time complexity, I think, with sort of a brute force approach is gonna be N times M going over every position, and then multiply that by N plus M. Now, can we do better than this? The answer is yes, and once again, the problem can be solved just by using additional memory. You can use either an array or the classic hash map. So what specifically are we trying to speed up? Remember that for a given uh, server, we want to know, is there any other server in the same row or same column? Is there any sort of pre-processing that we could do? That would allow us to answer that question quickly. Is there any sort of data that we could have pre-computed? Well, like I said, remember, for a given server, if there are more than one servers in that row or a given column, so the number of servers is greater than one, specifically if it's greater than one in the column or the row, then the answer is going to be yes. Otherwise, it's going to be no. So what we can do is just pre-compute the row counts and the column counts. And I think we can do these in an array. So uh, for example, we could have an array for every single uh, row and we could say, okay, this row has two servers. This one has one, this one has one, and this one also has one. We could do the same thing uh, up above. I don't know if I'll have enough space. I'll try my best. So here we have one server in this column. Here we have two, here we have one, here we also have one. So now I'm going to, once again, just iterate over the grid, looking at every server, and then I'm gonna check, does this server 
have more than one server in the same column? Nope. What about the same row? Well, yes, it does. And I can check that in constant time. The pre-computation, like computing these two arrays, is also going to require iterating over the entire grid, but that's only going to be done a single time. So you could say that the time complexity to pre-compute is going to be O of N times M, and then we're going to once again iterate over the entire grid, which is again going to be O of N times M. And then to answer the query, the yes or no query for every single server, we can do that in constant time just by looking at the value here and the value here. Same thing with this server. There's a two, so it can communicate with another guy. This one, there's a two. This one, there's a one, and there's a one here. So that means that there isn't any other server in the row or the column, so we give it a no. In total, we count four servers that can communicate with other servers, and thus that's what we return. Now let's code it up. So I'm just going to start with a little bit of boilerplate. I usually just get the dimensions of the grid and rows and columns. And then I'm going to create those data structures I was talking about. I'm going to use arrays. You could also use hash maps, I think. But I have a array, which is going to give me the number of servers in every single row. So I'm going to use the row as the index and the value is going to be the count. Same thing with column count down here. So now we're going to have two phases. One is going to be that pre-processing. And we're going to go through every row and column with a couple of nested loops here. And then inside of the loops, we want to check this specific position. If it's equal to one, that means there's a server there. And so we can update the row count for this specific row. We can increment it by one. And same thing with the column count, just increment it by one. After that, we have phase two, which is now to once again iterate over the entire grid. But now that we have the row count and the column count, we can very quickly determine for a given position. If this position, first of all, it has to have a server. So this is evaluating to true, aka it's going to be one. And we need to know that either the row count of this row is greater than one or the column count is for this column greater than one. So this and either this or this. So that's why I'm putting parentheses around here. But we can actually condense this. I don't know if you'll prefer it this way, but we can condense it into one by taking the max of both of these values because we just need to know that at least one of them is greater than one. So of course, we're going to pick the max to actually compare with one. And if that is bigger than one, then we are good. So that's not really an optimization, but I just think it's a little bit cleaner. Now, if this is the case, simply we just increment the result by one, which I don't think I've declared. So let me declare that over here before I forget. And then maybe if I can fit everything on the same screen down here, we will be returning the result. So now let's give this a run. And as you can see here, it works and it's pretty efficient. There is one way that we can actually optimize this a little bit more. And I'm just going to show you the code for that. It's not a like time complexity optimization. It's that we don't necessarily need to actually have additional memory because the memory complexity of this solution is going to be O of N plus M. I'm going to quickly copy and paste the code that I have, which will actually solve this in constant space with the same time complexity, like iterating over the grid. But the problem with that solution is it actually overwrites the input data structure. We can clean it up after that, but this is something that might not be allowed in some interviews, so it's worth clarifying. Let me show you that code now, though. First, let me just kind of skim through it, and let's just run it to make sure that it works. And here on the left, you can see it does. I mean, it says it was less efficient this time. I don't think it's actually less efficient. Memory complexity-wise, it doesn't look like it made a measurable difference. I think that's because the previous solution was also pretty efficient in terms of memory. That's why I'm not like covering this solution extensively. I do think that the previous solution was probably good enough. But just to uh, mention this solution, what we would do is once again get the dimensions of the grid. And then what we would do is go through every server. And for every server, we just want to check if that server can communicate with other servers on the same row. So that's what we're checking here. We're checking the communication that happens between the same rows. And then after that, we check columns. The reason we do it this way, you can see here what I'm doing first is getting the sum of every row, which is basically like going through every single column. 
and then I check if the row sum is less than or equal to one, then I can just skip that row. Otherwise, I will take the row sum and add it to the result. That means if there were uh, two or more servers in the same row, we would add them. If there was just a single server, then it can't actually communicate with others. That's why we don't add it to the result. That's why we would skip that iteration. But after that, we do something interesting. We will then take that position and mark it with a negative one to say that that server has already been counted. Because when we look at the servers that can communicate between the same columns, we don't want to count the same servers multiple times that we did before. So that's why uh, we mark it with a negative one. So then when we uh, look at this, we will compute the column sum similar to how we computed uh, the row sum. It's just that we can't uh, do that with like a built in function. We have to actually loop to do that. So in this loop, that's what we're doing. We're computing the column sum. We're using the absolute value of the grid because column sum should be the number of servers that are actually in this column, because then that value is going to be used in this if statement down here, checking that we did have at least two servers in the same column, then we can update the result. But we're not going to use the column sum to update the result because it could have had some negative ones added to it. We don't want to double count the same server. That's why we have a separate variable called unmarked. Unmarked will keep track of how many servers we had in this column that were not already counted. So we just have a couple if statements uh, to do that. And also, if we end up seeing a server that's a negative one, of course, we won't increment the unmarked count, but we can also then unmark that server. So I do believe that the solution would not actually permanently modify the input grid, at least after the function is called. This one wouldn't have been changed. Still, that can kind of be bad practice, though, so worth clarifying with your interviewer. But anyways, that is the code, and it does work. I ran it a little bit earlier. The only optimization that this code makes is uh, slightly space optimized. If you found this helpful, check out neatcode.io for a lot more. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you soon.